Riley back up to Neslin. Neslin gets that one stolen away. As chaos ensuing. Wow, what a play. But a heads up finish coming from number four, Kari Fala Kondi. And Kondi has been the king of, of fixing broken plays in this one. A corner three coming. Evan O'Reilly again sniping from the corner. Rashid, guarded by Son up top. Passing out of it as Monroe trying to get something going. And Cone couldn't hang on to it. Neslin grabs it, gets it up with O'Reilly. O'Reilly taking the contact from Jate. Muhammad Jate in a good position to make the stop, just couldn't get the, the swipe he needed. And now O'Reilly had a chance to extend the lead. First shot up on the money. This is an impressive start for this Ridgewood team. They've come out with a ball of energy. And despite being undersized, outmanned, I mean, they're taking it to Monroe. This is exactly what they needed, man. They have no bench right now. I mean, literally one guy on the bench. You know, this is exactly what they need to do. They needed a fast start. They got to come up with turnovers. They got to make tough shots. They're doing all of that right this second. As Rashid receiving the ball back, swings it to the side. Monroe having a tough time finding an easy shot, but drawing a foul. This is number 10, Mohamed Silla. Three different Mohammeds on this squad. Popular name. Yeah, they actually recruited as many people with the same name as possible just to make your life difficult. Uh, listen, man, I'll tell you, if that was, if that was the, uh, the goal, <laughs> they won. I, I still do wonder if we're going to see as the game goes on the fatigue setting in for Ridgewood. It's very tough to play 40 straight minutes of basketball. They're not going to have to do that because they do have one sub. But for all intents and purposes, that means you're playing about 32 minutes with maybe like one four-minute break a half. Like, I, it, it's going to be tough to sustain this offense, especially if Monroe is going to come out and pressure at half court like they have been doing. If I was Monroe, I would just go out in a full court press and really run Ridgewood as much as I could. You're an evil man, Bartek. But here we see them getting out in space and trying to run it. Oh, and O'Reilly trying to make the save, just couldn't grab it. So this will be Monroe ball. Again, Guevara down low, gets into a jump ball situation with O'Reilly. I'm waiting for Harvin Guerrero to just go up and dunk on somebody. Oh, I thought that was it right there. Well, Jackie got his own rebound and puts it back. I mean, he's towering over people. Yeah, that's a lot of chopped cheeses. They, they must have an air pod in or something. Coming out in the full court press, I love it. But that's all right, O'Reilly's able to beat it. Some quick passing coming from Ridgewood. O'Reilly finishing off the layup. Great response. And Jallo passing it over. The shot coming from Rashid. No good, but the cleanup crew doing its job. Four point game. And here's how you break the press. Quick passing. Oh, cash money. John Jackson from the corner three. I mean, this is not, like, it's fun to watch, but it's not a surprise to me because every time I've seen the kid, he just makes everything. Like, he, he is one of the better shooters in the state of New Jersey. There is not a shot in the gym that he doesn't like. And the best part about it is a lot of times people will say that as a negative thing about a player, like he's a ball hog. 
the good part is that the shot's like Johnny Jackson, too. It's a two-way relationship. Very much in a romantic relationship with the outside shot. This kid, you know, I'm loving it right now. They're going to need him if he's going to get it. O'Reilly taking the step and lucky for Monroe, too, because that ball was falling to Jackson, who was surely open again. You got to learn the name. You got to get somebody on him. Because if you leave him I open, mean, he's going to kill you. I mean, this is like, if there was ever a game, and I, I don't mean this I, with, with all due respect to the rest of the, the Ridgewood roster, the box in one was built to play against Ridgewood. You, Johnny Jackson, I mean, he should be, like, the defender should be trying to get into his jersey. That's how tight they should guard him. Like, he should be face guarded all 40 minutes. I don't know, Jack. He still might get the shot off as this one is going to fall in and favor of Monroe. Don't get me wrong, Ridgewood has good supporting players around Jackson, but the Ridgewood solar system rotates around Johnny Buckets. Well listen, I'll tell you right now, Ty Neslin and Evan O'Reilly have done a good job of getting uh, open and making their shots. So we'll see what they bring. As a high arc and shot from Rashid Bounces to the right. Nestling gonna give it over with Jackson. Jackson stepping back, thought he was gonna pull it. As he's guarded, he passes over to O'Reilly. A solid defensive job from Jallo. O'Reilly letting it rip, too strong. Jallo comes down with the rebound. He's gonna take it the other way. Four minutes remaining. Rashid over to Barry. Barry driving in. Me and O'Reilly at the hole, and he finishes. Jackson, back over to O'Reilly. It's Phelps. Oh my dishes Lord! Dishes it out. Oh, it's just a little short. I, I don't even care that he missed. Jackson. You cannot jump the passing lane on Johnny Jackson. But how about jumping into a reverse layup there from Mohammed Rashid? Oh. A no-look back coming from Jallo. And a foul there is going to go against Jake Phelps. Now, let me just say this. Credit to Ridgewood. They're doing a great job breaking the press. And that's a great sign for them going into the season when they see the press. It's going to be tough to press them in the regular season when they have their full co football kids back. They have their full roster. I mean, I... I it's the right strategy for Monroe. As easy as they're breaking the press, when I walk into a gym and I see a team with six kids on the roster, I, the first thought in my mind is I am going to run these guys out of the gym. By the second half, they're going to be sweating buckets. They're going to be begging for water cups at every time out. And, you know, Ridgewood's doing a good job breaking it. They're having to run more. They're having to put in more effort just to get it across half court. And by the second half, they're going to be tired and you're going to be on your third rotation of the bench. All right, Eisenhower, take it easy there. That, that is a fantastic analysis, but Jack, where your mind goes when it comes to strategizing, I'm going to be honest, man, huh? <laughs> you could be on the world, we're just taking over a third world country, man. Good God. Listen, you win it. You win at any cost. It, I'd it, hate to play you in a game of risk. <laughs> As Ooh. Ty Neslin taking it, but that's going to be a charge, and what a charge it was! Great step in. And Great step in. Fantastic job from number three up top, Brian Bow. To just hang in there. I, I love that. There are some lunatics on this planet that want to get rid of the charging foul. That would be the worst thing to ever happen to basketball. Jack, what, what conversations are you having? I've never once heard anybody advocate for that. There are people that really think that on Twitter, that it's a bad play for basketball. There is nothing better. If you took the charge out of basketball, you would just have guys steamrolling to the basket. That's a great step in. Speaking of steamrolling to the basket, drawing the foul on Sun, a nice job for Monroe's number 14, Mohamed Jete. Jete's first shot. Wide left. 
but only a chance to tie it at 25 if he can make the second one. One minute, 20 seconds and counting. Nails it, we're all tied up at a quarter century. And Son hanging in there, getting it over with Jackson. Jackson up with Schwanti. Schwanti getting over to O'Reilly. O'Reilly spins too much on it. Would have been a good look. Nice rebound for Fofana. Barry dishing over that with Jate. No one home. And Schwanti taking it. Charlie Schwanid hounded right now Ooh. and taking the contact. It looked like he got his ankles kicked out from under. I'll tell you what, they are certainly, they, they heard my message. They are making them work for every inch of the court. Well, I mean, with the bench that they're bringing, eight players on the bench as opposed to one. So they got seven times the power to work with. As Jackson's going to take the inbound. 25 seconds to work with. Hounded by Barry. Barry coming up with it. Passing it over. Layup attempt up, and it is good for Bow. How about Bow and Barry linking up on the fast break? O'Reilly now. Two seconds, and it's going to fall with Nyland. Nestling and Nestling. Nails it as we head to halftime now. What a game we got on our hands, Jack. Yeah, I don't know what got into that Monroe team at the end, but they really turned up the pressure defensively uh, and not like just high energy all over the court. Different team than what they started. Maybe a, a long trip from the Bronx, and it just took them a little bit to get their legs under them in that first half. But once they got going, they, they really played well, defended well, especially at the end of that first half. And if they can keep up that intensity for the next 20 minutes, it's going to be hard for Ridgewood. With that being said for Ridgewood, really good job offensively. Johnny Jackson, I, I mean, you need to guard him the second he enters the doors of the gym to the second he leaves and hops in his car, there needs to be a man on him face guarding or he will light you up. And he did that early in the first half it's what kept Ridgewood in this game and what has it tied up right now if they can shut that him down in the second half it's going to be a win for Monroe yeah man I mean it's going to be really hard for Ridgewood to pull this one off I mean the fact that they threw the first punch they were controlling the first half for the most part and even when that press started coming doing a nice job of handling the quick pass is the way to beat it tied up at 27 but I don't know, man. We're only having a six-man roster. John Jackson, Ty Neslin, Evan O'Reilly, Rick Son, Charlie Schwarnid, and Jake Phelps. It's it's going to be an uphill battle, man. Yeah, shout out to Ridgewood, though. I remember those days. Small, I grew up in a small town, much smaller than Ridgewood. So I remember going to fall ball games and spring ball games, whatever, and you'd only have six guys. It's hard. And for them to come out and battle the way they have and play a good team from the Bronx, it's no joke. And I got to give them a lot of credit for being able to hang in this one. And they gave themselves a shot, a puncher's chance here in the second half. Well, we'll see what happens in the second half. We're going to take a short break here. All abilities live. Brandon Mazmarazzo, Jack Bartek. We'll be right back with seven, second half action starting soon.
back here on All Abilities Live, and we are all tied up at 27 as the second half of Ridgeward versus Monroe Campus from the Bronx, New York, is set to get underway. And what a battle it's been. John Jackson, fingerprints all over him, Ty Nestlin, and it seems like Evan O'Reilly have combined for all the points in this one. Only rocking with a six-man roster right now as they are out bench seven to one for Monroe. Monroe figuring things out with that press. O'Reilly attacking in and walks right into the lane, taking on two Monroe defenders, no problem. See how Monroe responds here. Barry swinging it to Guevara. Guevara skip pass out front. Monroe trying to swing it. It's Nestlin coming away with it. Nestlin trying to get it up, but intercepted by Rashid. Rashid losing it. Jackson with a reverse, no good, and the big fella, Guevara, coming down with it. Pass up top to Barry again. Barry and Muhammad Rashid lurking on the perimeter. Trying to break in to this zone from Ridgewood. Dad said he, he Rashid comes in, he misses, but again on the cleanup is Jallo. O'Reilly with Nestlin. As Monroe go into the zone, trying to get the cutter. Too much space for Jackson, cash money three from the wing. I told you, Maz, as soon as he steps into the gym, he's dangerous. Doesn't matter. He could be sitting in the fourth row. He could be sitting on the stage. He could be at the scorer's table. He could be on the bench. Guard him anywhere he is. They should guard him in the locker room. They should guard him on the team bus on the way to the game. They should guard him in fourth period algebra. Uh, they should guard him at night in his bedroom the night before the game. While he's going to sleep, they should tuck him into bed and make sure a defender is sitting on a stool next to his bed because... If you don't, he will light you up. Jack, they should go find his username on 2K and double team him there. Follow him around the park, around the neighborhood. Anywhere you need to, the internet world, the metaverse, whatever have you, the real world, the dream time continuum, what have you. You gotta follow this kid all over the place. They should send a player to transfer to Ridgewood to make the Ridgewood basketball team to guard him in practice. Following from class to class, any round objects, don't even let him shoot a paper ball at the basket. As that shot misses, Jackson trying to come down with it. Nice job by Barry to sneak away with it. He's double teamed by Nestlin. Nestlin starting the tip drill. And a rough shot, but the big fella I Guevara. Mean, he doesn't even have to jump to tip that one back home. On his tippy toes and he puts it back in. Great pass from Son. O'Reilly attack, and he pulls back, hitting it off the rim. A chance to tie here for Monroe. Dish to the corner. Rashid driving. Muhammad Rashid fading away. Couldn't get the friendly, and an over the back call is going to go against the big fella. Harvin Guevara with imposing size. And now, in, in all seriousness, though, I know we, we were joking around about Johnny Jackson. He is one of the most fun players to watch, and not only in the county, probably in all of the state of New Jersey. And you have to guard him the way they're guarding him right now. I mean, look at this zone you see right now. I mean, a full court press with layers like an onion. Jackson, up top. He's going to let it rip. Oh, young fella, I would have flipped the table if he made that one. Costly pass there, nestling on top of it. And Bartek about to come out of retirement for a second. I know if we were on the side, you were pulling that. Don't lie to me. I, I Listen, you saw that form. Elbow tucked, wrist straight. Eyes deadlocked. Don't worry about the defense. Nestling over to Jackson. Jackson driving in. Takes on the big fella and puts a little height on it to beat Cavero at the hoop. Yeah, he said, listen, I'm not just a shooter. I can I can mess around inside as well. 
If that's if you're going to come out and face guard me up top, I could get into the paint and, and hurt you that way. He could score at all three levels. Is that they ball keep trying to pass the ball to me, man. Jack, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Ridgewood might need you in this one. Only a one-man bench. Go suit up, Listen, buddy. I'm I open. Can handle I'm this. open. I, I got I got my maroon on. I'm open. I understand. I'm just letting you know. I can handle this broadcast for one game. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time y'all left me out alone. You know, Mr. ESPN over here. And decides to take college classes on Wednesday night. Like, he doesn't know that Wednesdays and Saturdays are the only days that we do anything. <laughs> Bum. There we are. And welcome to... Me? Maz on his soapbox. I'm going to be honest with you right now. Uh, they should just give me my own television series. Picture this. That's a terrible Me idea. in Orlando just riding around in a car all day. It's a, it's a terrible We might idea. be canceled within one episode, you know. But that's all right. Sure, they're going to have fun. I'm really impressed with Ridgewood. This is, I mean, obviously, basketball-wise, how they play it, how they shot the ball. But, I mean, just to mentally be able to keep yourself in it, when they show up with 15 guys and, and you're outmanned and you're outsized, for them to show up to this one and be able to hang around in it, it's impressive. It's a great thing to see in a team. You want to go through adversity in the fall. You want to put yourself in situations where you're punching up because this is where you really find out about a team. This is where you see what a team is. You know, when you're trailing in a game like this and you have to fight back. You don't learn anything about your team by going to play against some group one teams and beating them by 30. This is where you really find out what you're made of. And when you get your whole group back, this is going to be the games that you look back on and you say, yeah, we, we found out who we were in those moments. As Neslin again coming up with the steal, Jackson, too much space. Cash money from the wing. This kid is ridiculous. Like J-Lo in the 90s, too much to handle. I mean, they're starting to turn this one into a bit of a blowout. It's a seven-point game now. Monroe's got to be careful before they let this one get out of hand. They need to find some consistent offense. It's kind of flown under the radar here because they did do a nice job defensively in the first half. They have been stifled offensively, especially with the size advantage that they have. There's no reason they should not be able to get some better shots. And we'll see what they can come up with in the final 14 minutes, but the offense has got to be better. No, you got that right. And I'm going to be honest, the defense could use a little work too. You see that they switched to that zone, but then Jackson and O'Reilly were just dicing them up from down uh, town and then trying to switch things up. O'Reilly has legitimately just walked in the paint multiple possessions. And he nails both of them at the free throw line. I mean, it's almost double digits now. New Jersey basketball. This is what we're bringing. Barry, three-point shot, no good. Good rebound coming from Phelps. Nestlin swinging over with Son. Son with a cross-court pass to O'Reilly, and O'Reilly's going to get hit with the travel. I don't know about that one. I mean, you're allowed the hop gather step after the one step uh, it's a hard decision to call but come on ref they're down they're out bench seven to one for crying out loud give them a break as Neslin is just absolutely swamped by Rashid Son coming in with the help swinging it now Phelps over to Jackson and still Ridgewood breaking the press showing off the Iron Man basketball they said 40 minutes, no problem, we're here for it. And I spoke too soon as O'Reilly loses a shoe. And the offensive woes still coming, but a nice putback for Monroe after the wide open miss layup. Just not in a rhythm right now. Son breaking the press, he's gonna take a layup himself. He said, thank you, I'll walk right in there. 
No help coming on me. Don't leave me one on one. The defense has not necessarily been there in this half the way it was in the first half either for Monroe. But I'll tell you what's been there, the effort from Ridgewood, even though they don't win the possession there, a heck of a job from Ty Nestlin, not making it easy. I'll tell you right now, the way that Ridgewood's playing, you think they've been hanging out with Cardiac Kane Velasquez. Great fight inside. That is an awesome rebound for Ty Nesslin. He's a really good player, man. Oh, and Jackson lets it rip. A little off target, no problem. Barry coming down. That is a great block from Nesslin. And surely that one was getting through to the other side for an open three. 11 minutes remaining, 44-35 in favor. Oh, and a strong grab coming from O'Reilly. Gonna send Sabayo. Nestlin and O'Reilly are, are the type of guys that you will almost always find on a winning team. Two like, enforcers. Every team needs guys like that. They're like the Marcus Smart type, probably not going to come into the gym and give you 30 on any given night. Me, like they have the ability to do it every now and again, but they do everything else well. They pass well. They defend. They're willing to get on the floor for a loose ball. They'll get in there and fight for rebounds. And good basketball IQ as well. And they annoy the best team's other player. The best player on the other team. It's what you need to do. I mean, part of being a good defender is being a pest. You got that right. And with 10 minutes to go, I mean, Ridgewood is still leading by seven. It, it's really, really surprising. The way they've been able to keep their stamina up all game despite full court pressure against them. Give them credit. And even after a block, see Nesson on the ground fighting for it. That is the smart decision coming from Mohammed Rashid with the bigger defender trailing him. He goes with the reverse and makes it a five point game. Yeah, very wise. He, he would have been swatted out of the gym if he went up with it with the right hand. Instead the reverse. Uses the rim to protect his layup. That's good basketball. Speaking of good basketball, how about a quality steal and a layup finish coming from number four, Kari Fala Kondi. And now a three-point game after that run. Ridgewood's got to find some uh, a little stability here, Jackie. Yeah, and Ridgewood wants to talk about it, maybe more so. They want to get a breather. And this is kind of a little bit more of what I expected to see in the second half. You're about halfway through now, 30 minutes. These guys have been running up and down, playing pretty much the entire game. And, you know, it's going to catch up to you. You're going to start to make lazier passes. You're going to have a tougher time beating guys off the dribble. And that turns into turnovers. And turnovers turn into fast breaks, which turn into points. It, uh, this is why... You press full court when you have a 10-man advantage on your bench. Well, Jackie, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm a sucker for a story, and, and what a story it would be for Ridgewood. I know it's fall ball, but to turn around and be like, we were outnumbered almost 3-1, to one, and we were the one, and to pull a win off like this would just be absolutely stupendous. While defending Jersey, I mean, I'm here for it. But I'll tell you right now, we're seeing a lot of hustle plays coming from Ridgewood but it's not leading anywhere as the hustle play comes and then a counteractive hustle play coming from Monroe and they ended up with the fast break. I think you gotta pick your moments a little better on where to waste that extra energy if you're Ridgewood. Yeah, either way, like I said, I don't wanna be moral victory guy, but this is the time for it, right? You're, you're not really counting wins and losses in the fall. This is a moral victory for Ridgewood. They've fought in this one and showed some really good signs. Well, Jackie, don't act like they're out of it yet. What's your legacy if you're Ridgewood? 
And how about a big time offensive board? Jackson in the corner, and he slips. Oh, the slippage. Oh, you hate to see it. That's a good move, but you gotta finish it, young fella. And speaking of finishing, it just feels like Kari Falakoni and, and Chate have just finished everything in this game when a teammate misses. Hey, he's a great athlete. He reminds me of a player we saw last year. Who's he, coming to mind, buddy? He reminds me of David Alexander from Saddle River Day. Yep. We saw, remember, we saw him, uh, I believe, against Paramus Catholic at Patterson Charter School. You know, uh, a, he was the point guard. They yes. were playing against the team from Connecticut. Yeah, a good athlete, well built. So he, he's got the toughness to really go down there and bang. Like uh, on that end one, that's what made me think of it is that he absorbed that contact with no problem, still went up strong with it. But then also a smooth player. And I think that's a hard combination to find at some levels of high school basketball. And Alexander struck me as a guy that fit both of those molds last season. Um, another guy who was kind of like that was Evan Brown from Dwight Englewood, who has since transferred to St. Joe's. But that's a, another, you know, type of player that you need to be successful. It's guys that are tough and are going to be able to go in there and bang down low over the course of a game. Yeah, Jack, I don't know if you know, but uh, I think Dwight Englewood's got a little beef with me. After uh, that Peyton Seals dunk, my apologies. I was, I was giving props, but, uh, you know, it happens. When you play against Peyton Seals, Peyton Seals should be in this game right now. Yeah. Originally, this was slated to be Ramapo. What a matchup that would have been. Ooh. Ooh, Johnny Buckets getting after it. Pushing the lead back to two. And they get the steal on the inbound. That's great burst from Johnny Jackson. He is a sneaky athlete. I know it's like a cliche thing to say, but you see him shoot the ball the way he does, and I feel like good shooters kind of get pigeonholed into the shooter mold. Jackson can move, man. I'm going to be honest with you. You look at the kid, and he just looks like your aunt's favorite nephew. You know? Just looks so harmless. He's like Look, a slot receiver. so much damage. Absolutely. They're quick and twitchy. I don't know about that. When that ball looked like it came down with it. That's a tough turnover. I mean... That's a tough call. Rumor has it, the rest from New York. Oh my God. Letting them know about it too. I believe Steven Ceballo on that shot. As Monroe goes up one, Jackson swinging it with Son. Rick Son. Over to Jackson, Jackson fires, cash, money, three! I mean, I, I really cannot stress it enough. I, you're watching that possession, there was about three times that Johnny Jackson could have taken a shot. I don't understand it. I don't understand how that one almost just fell in. A nice putback, I believe from Mohammed Rashid. But I believe it was Condi on the initial reverse attempt. Like you watch 35 minutes of Ridgewood basketball and Johnny Jackson is still getting open shots. You need to reevaluate your Yo, game plan. Yo, this kid is legit. You gotta be kidding me, man. He just took out three defenders, and they got the strength in numbers right now. Ceballo, dumping it down low. Kundi, another hard shot, another cleanup job. This one looks like it might come down to the wire here. Oh, Jackie. I don't know if I have free basketball in me. We've already had one overtime period today. Cash money, Evan O'Reilly. From the left wing, no problem. Well, I said it early. They were going to have to shoot the ball at, at a pretty outrageous clip to be in this one and potentially win it. They've emptied the mag in this one. They've shot it really well, especially in the second half. Rick Swan, Son swinging it. Nestling now. 
Over to O'Reilly. Back to the man, the man. O'Reilly with the hop step. Almost getting caught with the jump ball. Great defense from Ceballo. Getting that one up with Rasheed. Rasheed going to take That's smart. the foul. And, and you see Jackson looking over at the coach, letting him know, I had to do it. No, that's a smart foul. It was three on two and really not even three on two because Jackson was trailing the play and was just able to catch up from behind a foul. Give and a yeah, take the foul and live to see another defensive possession rather than give up what is, is realistically an easy two. A lot of steps there from Barry. I, I don't know if it was a travel or not. Wish we could see the replay, but I do know that is one heck of a decision and a pass. Condi has been tough inside today. I like his game. He's just there every time Monroe needs him. I mean, finishing off, I mean, it's either a cleanup or it's a nice assist coming. He's got a tough angle and he finishes it. Nestling, getting past two of them. Oh, but a great recovery from Guevara. Here comes Ceballo. He loses it and it's going to be Schwandy coming away with it. Oh, great Extra ball movement. Extra pass, O'Reilly catch, money three in the corner. 3.30 left on the clock. That's such good basketball. And a four point lead for Ridgewood. Jackson or Nestlin could have easily pulled those two jump shots. Instead, they're willing to swing it and get a much better shot. As Harvin Guerrero comes back and makes it a one point game, I did not know Guerrero had that in his bag. I would like to see him do that more. I mean, if he, if, if he could shoot it like that at his size, uh, hello, power five offers calling. You got that right, and I'm telling you right now, there's only one person on this team that could guard a shot like that if you're Ridgewood, and that's Evan O'Reilly, and even then it's gonna be harder because he's given up some inches. Three minutes, 15 seconds. And Jack, you know what the best part about all this is? We got another one after. We got another one after, baby. We are getting our paychecks worth. That's going to be a fun one, though. St. Peter's a good team. And I'm excited to see Newark Tech. We saw them very early in the year last year. And from what I read, they had a pretty strong finish to last season. And they grew as the year went on, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm excited to see them again and, and see how that group has grown since we last saw them. Couldn't remember if they got the win. I know we were at Newark versus everybody when we saw them. They did end up winning that game. I do remember some quality ball being played. Nestling getting it up and somehow, some way Phelps hangs on to that. Jackson guarded by Mohamed Rashid. We'll swing over, and that is going to be a reach-in foul going against Kari Falakondi. I mean, if I'm Ridgewood, I'm just running dribble handoffs until they either stop it, foul me, or I get a, a wide-open layup. And there's no shot clock. Ooh. Oh, slippage. Oh, man. Uh. That has been an issue. The splits have made a debut. In increasingly as the days went on. A lot of traffic throughout the gym. In the corner three is short. I don't know why you would force that there, but Barry has an easy two pointer as they take the one point lead and a costly pass from Phelps. You gotta be smarter than that. And it's going to be O'Reilly coming in to save the day and quelch the fire for the time being as the foul will go against Mohamed Silla. Yeah, I, I don't love the shot, to say the least. I mean, there's no shot clock. You're in no rush at all. You have the lead. Like I said, at that point, and... You're going to get free throws here. He has a chance to make up for it and, and knock these two down at the line. If you get the lead back here, 
and you get a stop defensively, you should not shoot the ball unless there's no defender in the same zip code as you. Jack, I swear to God, if I got to call a team just passing and running out a two-minute clock for the rest of this game, don't ever ask me to fill in on play-by-play -play ever again. I retire. <laughs> but a smart strategy. Wow, surprised be. to see Ridgewood dialing up the press here. I think they have to, man. You got to let it go. Son could have came up with that one. That's a nice job from Jackson. Okay, now I, I was a little confused. The score had said 58-58. No, no. But he made both. There, so they were a little late updating it. And now the ball has disappeared. Uh, it went underneath the The ball the is stage. gone. We've lost the ball. That's it. Wrap it up. I mean, that is a tight space. I'm not going back there. Hey, Jackie, That's for sure. Uh, it's 7.30. We already know. We can still make it to Chick-fil-A. And, I mean, nobody seems to be doing anything about it. The ball is under the stage. Guess who's going for it now? And Johnny Jackson does it all. They should still send a man down there to guard him while he's under the stage. <laughs> Rumor has it there's another basketball hoop down there. And, of course, he comes away with it. A uh, little bit dusty. Hey. Might want to wipe that off. A little spit shine action, no problem. Remember, the Looney Tunes had to clean up the gym. So I'm pretty sure we can uh, clean up a basketball real quick for them. So here's the deal. I know it's fall ball, but you're still trying to win, right? So if you get a stop here and you're up by one, you're at a seven-man disadvantage. You should not shoot the ball. But they did not get the stop, unfortunately. That's a quick bucket from Monroe will give them the one point lead and here comes the press from Monroe a, a beautiful job to break it it's from great Ridgewood ball. for now as Nestle gets it over to Jackson three cash money and it is raining a two point lead just like that for Ridgewood you gotta be kidding me dude this kid is ridiculous uh, imagine if he was playing on Ramapo with how they, they, they set up the three ball. Oh, oh went up too strong. And there's going to be a foul on the floor. I don't even think it's going to be a shooting foul. He's Shackton. He is Shackton a fool on that one. Oh, man, the, the safety blanket, too, Condi. Just going up too strong. Didn't have the hops on That was impressive, though. He almost, he almost threw that down flat-footed off, too. That's some crazy athleticism. They want to talk this one over. It's a, it's a big possession. Can't give up a three. Let them, if they're going to get a two, it's tied. You get the ball back a minute left. Realistically, you could dribble it out and get the last shot in that situation. Sure. I mean... Here is what I will say, too. I, I can't let it get too far. We've got to go back to that possession. I understand you're pressing. I understand the ball is loose. You're trying to recover the 50-50 ball. But I, I, I need to, like, I, I don't know if I need to say it in a different language. There is one man on the court that you can never lose, and he's wearing number 10 in white. And you lost him, and he gets a wide-open three, and that is the type of stuff that... You know, not trying to be too harsh, but you deserve to lose the game if you're allowing Johnny Jackson to get open shots in crunch time. You deserve to lose. It's, it's bad strategy. It's bad defense. You deserve to lose the game if you're letting him beat you. You cannot lose him. You should have a man on him that doesn't even look at what is going on with the rest of the play. They will be singing the praises of Ridgewood for the years to come if they can hold on for the next one minute and three seconds. Big free throws coming up for the big man, Condi. He's been great today, but none of it really matters unless you make these two. Well, I guess it's fall ball. Again, the results only mean so much. And he missed that one, and he really missed that one. But I'll tell you right now, it's not, it's okay 
if he made both of them. You just can't have the big fella Jallo grab this offensive board off it. Using the glass, the bank is still open. Oh, oh, and a costly decision just rushing. What are you doing there, Nestlin? You can't do that. You can't. I know you saw him open, but why are you rushing there? The time is in your favor. You've been breaking the press the entire and, and time. And the worst part about it is now the inbound is right underneath the basket. So Barry with the ball now, gonna be guarded by Shawnee. Oh, and an illegal screen goes against Jallo. They are going out of their way on both sides not to win this game, Jackie. And you are ready. Jackie's ready to go grab a clipboard himself and draw up a play. And again, Ridgewood doing a nice job of breaking through the press. This is textbook. I mean, Coach Potts couldn't draw it up any better himself. And an easy bucket from Jackson on the other side. What are we doing? Losing. And now tying the game up, Muhammad Rashid. 64-64. Jackie, you are never, ever going home again. Congratulations. Get the sleeping bag. This Go game. get a bag of popcorn. We're sleeping. We are sleeping at Roselle Catholic tonight. This, game this is has our new been home. Dropped on its head. This game makes no sense at all. I mean, this is unbelievable. Scale of one to ten. How close are you to losing your mind? I just don't understand. Listen, it's I'm trying not to be too harsh because it's fall. But and these are things that you need to work out. And when you get into practice, you'll work them out more. But, like, how is nobody looking at how they are getting beat on defense and saying we need to guard one player? I would rather run a box in one and not press than press and let that guy get open shots all evening. He's got to have 30 points. At least. And the press has forced some turnovers. I'll give them that. But right here, I would not have been pressing. As Sarn just gets that pass away. Oh. Wide open again. Oh, and he almost did it. Nestle flies in for the rebound. A loose ball ensues. And a foul is going to be called. A timeout. A timeout is going to be called. And a smart one. And how are you not guarding John Jackson? On I mean, again, three? I'm trying Once not again. to how be. How are you not guarding him? I'm trying not to be too harsh. But you deserve to lose the game. Flat out, allowing that shot to take place with no defender near him, you deserve to lose. The game should be over. I, it's, I just can't wrap my head around it. I mean, I get the, the only explanation I can give for it is that it is fall ball and you're trying to just implement defense that you would be running against anybody. Like, this is the time to learn. So maybe you want to just run a game of full court press so we have installed that and we know we can run it in game time but at some point you got to want to win right yeah i don't know man i'm gonna tell you right now if i'm monroe's coach i mean we are running gassers oh I mean, that's oh, a you terrible can't foul take that foul either i mean jallo i i know you're the biggest guy in the game here right now outside of Guerrero, but and, and i think guerrero is even saying to him there you cannot Take that foul. You're giving the best free throw shooter that's maybe stepped in the gym today two shots. Best to win shooter the game. in the gym. Ten seconds. I'll, I'll tell you one thing that I certainly know about this game. When these coaches go back and watch the film, <laughs> they are going to be very happy that it's October oh, and yeah. not December. Dude, I mean, he's just green light automatic. Here we go. What do you got? You got a three-point shot dialed up, maybe. Wow. Got to go. They don't have a timeout. I don't think they had a timeout, at least. They should put at least three seconds back up there if they did have a timeout. Now they're saying two seconds. 
That's a spectacular play. I believe that was number one on the play. I believe that was Mohammed Rashid. To, to keep his footing, he almost slipped down there too. To keep his footing, keep his balance, and just eat that one over the rim. That's a great finish from Rashid. Jackie, here's what's going to happen. They're going full court press. Ridgewood's going to get the ball. Uh, if there is one thing I'm that I am right saying now, in this huddle right now. He's going to shoot no, it. If there is one thing I'm saying in this huddle right now, because I could see what might happen here, do not foul under any circumstance. There is no world in which you foul here. That is the worst thing you can do. No, they're going full court press. Ridgewood's oh. going to get the ball into Jackson's hands. And Jackson is going to send this nowhere. Oh. I got it to Jackson. He just couldn't hang on to it's it. Good defense by Rashid. He got the bucket to tie it. Nice defense there. I wouldn't have gone with a full court press. I think I would have gone with uh, uh, like a half court zone look and met them at the half court line. And if they beat you on a full court heave, so be it. But that puts you too close to the danger of fouling than I personally would like in that situation. Don't push me cause I'm close Good to song. the edge. Good song. Uh, I'm gonna be honest I, though. Like, cause, cause the way I look at it is if I'm, if I'm Johnny Jackson or anybody, any guard here that is right along the baseline and, and looking for the inbound pass, all I'm doing is faking like I'm running and throwing on the brakes and letting you run me over and I'm getting a, a one and one to win the game. I love the audible here to go to two minutes to the <laughs> overtime right now. Great call. I mean, we're already five minutes game time over, which means we're basically a half hour over what we should have been. Uh, but I'll tell you right now, I am feeling it for this Ridgewood squad. You can just got to know the lung capacity has got to be maxed out. Can they hold on for two minutes? And we I, Forget the moral victory. The fact that they're in OT right now, this team needs to stand up and take a bow. But the job ain't finished. You can etch your name into Hooptoberfest legends. They'll be singing psalms about you for the years to come of how they valiantly protected New Jersey from the Monroe invaders. I think you're starting to lose it. I think I've been in this campus too long. The good thing for Monroe is they still seemingly have fresh legs heading into overtime. How about that fresh legs there for O'Reilly coming all the way back. And without the shot clock, he's going to reset that. Oh, my, oh God. my God. The friendliest of rules you'll ever see. Jackie, I'll tell you right now, O'Reilly and the friends got a better relationship than me and you do. As Rashid pulls it, he misses. Jallo puts it up. The miss. Guevara grabs it, and he comes away with it. And the theatrical spill out onto the floor after the slip. As Son passes it up, nestling too much on it. You got to slow it down to get a better look than that. One minute on the clock now. Ken Ridgewood come up with a stop. Any stop will do. I'll tell you right now, the big fellas have to do a good job of keeping Jallo Guerrero and, of course, Condi off the glass if there's a miss. Jackson with a steal. Jackson taking it all the way. Layup. Count it. 32 seconds and counting. That kid can just light up a gym, man. Can he get another defensive stop? Nice job by Mohammed Rashid to come back. 15 seconds, to gotta tie go. It up. Jackson swinging it. Gotta find Jackson. O'Reilly pulling it. Why are you not giving that to Jackson? Oh, up gotta top? defend. And that's a charge. That's a charge. Great 1. step in. 1.5. What is happening? That's a great step in. Nestling, I, I getting mean, the job done. Condi, Condi's played a great game, but you have to see that. I, I saw that coming from half court. You have to hop step, put a little floater up there, and you guys are celebrating right now and taking the bus back to the Bronx. The same play that they tried. 
Oh, Jackson almost got it. Congratulations. We got double OT. This Put place. the minute. This oh, place. we got 10 minutes on the board. This place was ready to explode just now, man. Someone's got to fix that clock. We're only going to have a minute of OT. What happens if we if we go to a third overtime? Does it go down to 30 seconds? I think we're just going to get to a point where they're just going to shoot free throws back and forth. And something tells me that's going to favor John Jackson more than anybody. Jackie, we still got one more game. Yep, St. Peter's and Newark Tech on deck. I'm blowing my vocals right here. We'll have an interview with the MVP after this one. The crowd support, I don't know if this is all Ridgewood fans or just fans that have turned into support of Ridgewood. I mean, I, you could be from New York right now, and you have to respect the grit, grind, and hustle that Ridgewood is showing with this low of a bench. I mean, you don't even not need to know that they're missing football players right now. Just the fact that they've been hanging and they've been controlling, but something tells me right now, Harvin Guerrero is gonna win this ju jump ball. <laughs> there's no time on the clock. Oh, and there's so I don't know if they're a playing twisted sudden death. ankle. It looks like for O'Reilly, that's not a good sign. No, and he looks to be in some deal of pain. Yeah, man, he came down a little awkward after that jump ball. Honestly, he probably should have just let Guerrero have it. And I don't know, man. He, he looks like he's coming out. Yeah, he need, he's certainly got to get out. Needs some help off the court. And Ridgewood now left with just five players. If O'Reilly can't no go bench. back. And, and you have to hope, obviously... I mean, you think about it in, in the context of this game, but for Ridgewood, that's a more concerning thing. You hope that it's nothing serious that would keep him out for an extended period. Oh, man. All right. So uh, O'Reilly goes down, unfortunately. The lineup is going to bring Phelps into the game. And it's... So it's Ridgewood ball, right? Sudden death. I don't and, like this. And here you go. You have a chance. I don't like this. I mean. This is like college football overtime. I mean, if they pull it off, though, just take your time, young fellas. Son! 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 Game over! Game over! Jersey! 2-0 versus New York, baby. Taylor Ham over bacon, egg, and cheese. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Everybody looking for John Jackson. The stragglers looking. Looking for Ty Neslin. Evan O'Reilly on the bench. And it's Rick Son who comes away with the baby. Yes, sir. That was the game of the day. That's what I'm talking about. All abilities live, baby. Hooptoberfest, Jersey over New York, Jackie. I haven't seen something like that since WrestleMania three. Fantastic. We just saw Hogan take down the giant. What a down pitch. goes Frazier, down goes Monroe, down goes Monroe. What a finish. Oh, I mean, all the respect in the world to Ridgewood. That is ridiculous to show up with six guys. You play a team that clearly outsizes you, and, you know, they have more guys, probably eight or nine more guys than you, and they just turned them into a dogfight, and they did just enough offensively. I, I mean, that's so impressive, and, and they needed fundamentals too. It wasn't just the dogfight. Breaking the press all game long, which they really handled well, that's, that's an impressive victory. And that says a lot about a team, and that's something that will show up in the regular season when they get put in adverse situations. Fantastic. Absolutely, utterly fantastic. 
It's Rick Sohn with the final shot, but you know who the MVP is going to be. Johnny Buckets, no Johnny question about it. Buckets. John Jackson, come on down. 39. <laughs> County. John Jackson, come on down. You just won yourself an interview. I'm sorry it had to be us. Johnny boy, can you hear me? I can hear you. Buddy, Jackie, I, I got this one for a second. No bench, no problem. New York comes to Jersey. You guys single-handedly send them packing on what's going to be the longest bus ride in the history of bus rides. How'd you do it? I mean, honestly, we, we were coming into this game. We're missing about four or five key players, so we knew we just had to give it our all. I mean, you could tell right away they were laughing at us. They were like, it's going to be an easy one, but we played very hard. We're very scrappy, and we knew we were going to hang in there. Yeah, and, and, I mean, listen, I said during the game, I don't think you've ever met a shot you don't like. But the good thing is they like you back. Talk about that mentality as a shooter. And, you know, even when you're not making a shot, you have the confidence to come back down and take the next one. No, definitely. That's something I've learned over the years. I mean, if, if the shot doesn't go in, the next one, I just think it's going to fall. Like, even at the end, I missed one. That would have been a nice one. But the next one's got to go in. You just got to keep shooting no matter what. Man, uh, you guys really went to battle tonight. They started uh, trying to run you guys off the court, trying to use the numbers, man. How were you guys able to break that press? I mean, it was fabulous. I mean, honestly, I don't even know if we broke it, but, I mean, we tried our best. It was definitely, from what I've seen, that was a very good press. They were pretty big. They were long. They were athletic. You know, they had all the advantages, but we played very smart. We moved the ball pretty well, so that was the key. You're going into your third year of high school basketball. First two years, you go to a, a sectional final. You're a huge part of both of those teams. What have you learned in the last two years? How have you grown as a player? And, and what are you taking into your junior year with a growth mindset? Yeah, definitely. Uh, one thing I've learned is uh, the most important thing is you got to trust your teammates. I mean, over the years, like, there's definitely been some disagreements between me and my teammates, but at the end of the day, they're going to be the ones who are going to be there for you. So you just got to ride for them no matter what. So was the plan for that final shot for Rick Son? <laughs> Did he just make the play? Were you guys looking for anything, or was that drawn up? I'm going to be honest. Rick Son isn't even a basketball player. He's actually <laughs> pursuing a career in bodybuilding. He currently squats about 585 pounds. Whoa. Rick is a beast in the weight room, but the kid plays really hard, and he's actually had a couple of those moments just because he's just, he's just always there. He's running around. That's what he's, that's what he's there for. And, and I mentioned the past two years, you've been a big part of it. You guys have made great runs, yeah. but just come up short. What's the mindset going into this year? How do you take those and use it as motivation going into your senior season? Oh, I mean, yeah, that's, that's a good uh, point. My freshman year, we actually won the state sectional, and that was a great feeling. But this year, we lost. We got killed by Eastside in the finals. It was a pretty They're good team. Very good team. Uh, we had them earlier in the season. We lost by, like, three or four. But, I mean, that game really showed me a lot. And I think, I think this year we're going we're gonna to come back strong. I think we have a pretty good chance to win another Group 4 title. Well, Johnny, that, that was special performance, man. Thank you for taking the time. Congrats on the win. Thank and you guys good luck for having the rest me. of the Thank life. you. I appreciate it. Jack Bartek, Karina Marazzo here on All Abilities Live. We got one more coming up. We'll be back in just a minute here on All Abilities Live. Dog of dogs. <laughs>